John Cranton with JimFeist.com. Going to take a look at the 2014 NFC North, the black and blue division. Last year, three of the four teams were projected by Las Vegas to have a winning record, and they did. The only division in football to claim that. This year, it's only two, expecting the Vikings and the Lions to drop below 500 a bit. We're going to start with the Green Bay Packers. They're projected by Vegas at 10 wins. Now, Green Bay won the title four years ago, and they were 15-1 and one three years ago. But the last two years, 11-5, and 8-7-1, and one, they were 6-10-1 and one against the spread last year. Now, in an age of passing the football, the Packers are deadly. Sixth in the NFL in passing last year, 266.8 yards per game. Behind quarterback Aaron Rodgers, injury plague season, finished with 17 touchdowns and six interceptions, 2,536 yards. Two years ago, this guy had 39 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and over 4,000 yards. He's got a very stocked wide receiver core. Jordy Nelson, over 1,300 yards receiving. And wide receiver Randall Cobb, a playoff hero, had 433 yards. And tight end Jermaine, Jermichael Finley had 300 yards. He's back from a concussion. Now, the ground game last year for Green Bay was actually terrific, a huge jump going to seventh in the NFL in rushing behind running back Eddie Lacy. He had 1,178 yards, 4.1 yards per carry. Boy, this offense for 2014 of the Packers looks balanced and potent. Now, the defense, it's been a young defense, and they've struggled since winning that title. Last year, they ranked 24th against the pass, 25th against the run. Injuries were a big part of it. One change for 2014 is that Coach Mike McCarthy has instructed the defensive coordinator Dom Capers to simplify the defensive playbook in the schemes. Now they have terrific linebacker core with A.J. Hawk. He had 118 tackles, five sacks, and Clay Matthews, seven and a half sacks are dynamite. But they can't do it all, so they bring in 34-year-old linebacker Julius Peppers. He had seven sacks with the Chicago Bears. Green Bay secondary last year gave up too many big plays. They add first-round pick Ha Ha Clinton Dix. He should upgrade a secondary and allow Morgan Burnout to move to strong safety. Now they also have third-year cornerback Casey Hayward. He played in only three games last year because of injuries. So can this team get over 10 wins? Well, the schedule is brutal early on, opening at Seattle, hosting the New York Jets defense. Then they're at Detroit and Chicago, and all that is in September. Their road games are at Miami, the Saints, the Vikings, the Bills, and the Bucks. But they do get that bye week in Week 9, which is a nice break. All right, let's take a look at the rebuilding 2014 Detroit Lions. Las Vegas has them projected at eight wins. So how good a coach was Jim Schwartz? Well, a year ago, the Lions were projected by Vegas to win seven games. They won seven, and they dumped him. But now they're projected to win eight games. Only one NFL team outscored the opposition last year and still had a losing record. Yeah, it was these Detroit Lions. New coach Jim Caldwell, really, he's the opposite of Schwartz. He's a quiet, methodical teacher. Now the Lions passing offense is great and has been for a while. Fourth, second, and third in the NFL the last three years in passing. Last year they rolled up 280 yards per game behind quarterback Matt Stafford. 29 touchdowns, 19 picks, 4,650 yards passing, and wide receiver Calvin Johnson, 1,492 yards. To give him some help, they have free agent pickup Golden Tate. He's going to start opposite Johnson, and there's a huge Fall to the number three wide receiver, though. A guy to watch for the Lions will be tight end Eric Ebram. He's a rookie and the number 10 pick overall out of North Carolina with Brandon Pettigrew. This is probably going to be a two tight end offense for the Lions. Now, the ground game for Detroit ranks 17th. The entire starting offensive line is back, and new coach Caldwell has made it clear that running back Reggie Bush and Jacques Bell will split carries. Bush was actually very good last year, had over 1,000 yards rushing, 4.5 yards per carry, but he also caught 54 passes for 506 yards. That was third on the team. He's a good weapon, as it has been utilized very well in Detroit. Now, the Detroit defense, well, there's plenty of talent up front. They rank sixth against the run, but a suspect secondary ranked 23rd, allowing 246.9 yards passing per game. They still have Endomica Sue up front, five and a half sacks, and Nick Fairley, he had six sacks. Second round pick linebacker Kyle Van Noy has prize versatility, and he's going to be asked to perform a variety of roles at his strong side linebacker position, where he should take the starting job from Ashley Palmer. They also have defensive end Jason Jones. He's coming back from a torn ACL. Now, really, the big concern with the Lions is the secondary on defense, and it certainly looks like a weakness. I mean, cornerback Rashid Mathis 
He's reliable, but Darius Slay mostly struggled as a rookie last year, and he's coming off some surgery. Strong, strong safety. James Hidigabu is in, but he's not very good. He's been released by several teams. The schedule for the Lions, they're going to open at the Giants. They got the Panthers, Packers at the New York Jets. And then you look at their road games at Carolina, at the Jets, Vikings, Falcons, Cardinals, Patriots, and Bears. It's not an easy schedule. The Lions are one of only four teams. The Browns, Jaguars, and Texans never to have played in the Super Bowl. It's not going to be this year either. Detroit was 11-6 over the total two years ago, 10-5-1 over 2012, and then last year 8-8 eight eight over the total. So that's a three-year run going over the total, which is probably going to continue again. And keep in mind, the Detroit Lions are on a 6-10 ATS run. All right, let's take a look at the 2014 Chicago Bears. Las Vegas win projection is 8. Now, Chicago won 8-10 eight and 10 games under Coach Lovey Smith. Didn't keep his job, though. And then last year, they went 8-8 eight and eight under new coach Mark Tressman. In fact, they were money-burning 4-10-2 against the spread, as well as 12-4 over the total. He's actually a very good coach. He certainly upgraded the offense. The Bears improved to fifth in the NFL in passing, 16th in rushing. So offense in 2014 really should be dynamite behind quarterback Jay Cutler. 19 touchdowns, 12 picks. Running back Matt Forty provides great balance. He had 1,339 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. And what a devastating wide receiver one-two punch the Bears have with Brandon Marshall, 1,295 yards. And third-year wide receiver Ashlon Jeffrey, he led the team with 1,421 yards. The offensive line, which has for so long has been a misery in Chicago, really looks stable now. They went from 44 sacks two years ago to just 30 last year. Now the Bears' defense, as good as the offense was, the defense fell off the map with injuries. Plus they lose defensive end Julius Peppers and his sacks. They finished 15th against the pass, but dead last against the run, giving up a whopping 161 yards rushing on the ground per contest. That's why the Bears' first three draft picks were all for the defensive line. They get Virginia Tech defensive tackle Kyle Fuller. He was the 14th pick overall. In the second and third round, they grab picks Ego Ferguson and Willie Sutton at defensive tackle. So you're going to have a new look up front. 2012 first round pick Shane McClellan had four sacks, and he's going to be moving to strong side linebacker. Now they lost Peppers, but they do add 32 year old Jared Allen. He had 11 and a half sacks last year with the Minnesota Vikings, and 27 year old defensive end Lamar Houston comes over. He had six sacks with Oakland. Now the Bears secondary, they got some new looks too with first round pick safety Brock Vereen and free agent acquisition MD Jennings from the Packers. Chicago Bears schedule. It's going to be tough early on after opening up at home against Buffalo. They're going to be playing four or five games on the road at the 49ers, at the Jets. Later, they've got home games against the Packers, and they're at the Carolina and Atlanta. In, in week eight, it doesn't get much easy either as they're going to be playing a road trip at the New England Patriots. Now, Chicago Bears, they've been on a spread run the last two years, money burning 7-18-2 run into the new season. All right, in last place in the NFC North Division, Las Vegas has the Minnesota Vikings at six wins. They had quite a drop going from 10 and 6 to 5, 10 and 1 last season. They flamed out. So a new coaching staff steps in. Minnesota was 5 3 straight up and against the spread at home where they played well, but on the road, a disaster. 0 7 1 straight up, 4 and 4 against the spread. So former Cincinnati Bengals defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer steps in as the new coach. And they have a new offensive coordinator in Norv Turner. Now, in an age of passing the football, the Vikings really can't do it. 31 in the NFL two years ago and then last year, 23rd in passing, 8th in rushing the football. Quarterback Christian Ponder had seven touchdowns, nine picks. He's here, but so is Matt Castle with 11 touchdowns and nine picks. And they have rookie quarterback Teddy Bridgewater out of Louisville. Now, young wide receiver Cordell Patterson, he was very good with 469 yards, averaging 15 yards per catch. Jerome Simpson is here, 726 yards. He had a fine campaign. And while the passing game looks weak, the ground game is deadly behind running back Adrian Peterson, 1,266 yards. 4.5 yards per carry. Bit of a step back from 2002 in his remarkable campaign over 2,000 yards rushing and 6 yards per carry. Now the defense from Minnesota, boy, certainly needs an overhaul after finishing 31st against the pass, allowing 287.2 yards per game, 16th against the run, surrendering 110.4 yards per game. It's a young unit as two years ago they grabbed Florida defensive tackle Sharif Floyd with a 23rd overall pick, along with Florida State cornerback Xavier Rhodes. He was 25th. And this year they had linebacker Anthony Barr from UCLA. He was taken with a 9th overall pick. 
Audie Cole and Jasper Brinkley. They're going to compete for snaps at middle linebacker alongside Barr on Minnesota's defensive line. Really, it looks pretty good overall with Everson Griffin and Brian Robinson, a fine pass rushing duo. Lineville Joseph was a solid free acquisition. They haven't really had good safety play in the secondary, so Minnesota, uh, ever since Darren Sharper left for New Orleans. Now, Josh Robinson, he's going to be battling for the cornerback spot with free agent pickup Derek Cox. Now, the schedule for Minnesota, boy, this is a really difficult start. Rams, Patriots, Saints, Falcons, Packers, and Lions. The defense should be better, but boy, it's hard to see how the Vikings are going to improve that much on offense. Although, keep in mind, the Vikings are on an 11-4 run over the total. Still probably going to be last place in this very rugged division. Now, make sure you subscribe to Jim Feist's YouTube page. It's called Sports Betting. How do you do it? Well, you just click on the subscription link right here. Why? You get Jim's daily updates on team previews, free picks, pro line, all direct from Las Vegas. It's easy and it's free. Also, check out jimfeist.com for daily specials, top plays, articles, stats, videos, podcasts, and more. Also, you can get free picks on a toll-free recorded message each day. Just call one 294 1970 or send right to your text cell phone each day via text by going to winner at 313131.